Hi, I'm going to do a technique video today to show you a background technique that is really good to use for um, mini book covers. It gives a textured and an aged look and it's also quite flexible at the end which is why it's so good for book covers. Um, so you, what you're going to need for this, some black cardstock to begin with. You're also going to need some moulding paste, this is the golden brand. You're going to need some white pearlescent paint and I've got the Lumiere brand in pearl white. A range of embossing powders and if you want an aged vintage grungy look you need sort of the darker colours. So I've got the um, Tim Holtz Distressing in Vintage Photo. Um, I've got a Terracotta Rust colour, this is by Moon Glow. And a couple of other Moon Glows, this is um, a Green Gold. And this one is Midnight Gold Obsidian, so it's like a black with gold in it. And you will also need um, some Rub and Buff. Um, this is optional actually, but it does add a nice effect, and this is the gold leaf. And you need something to create some texture in it, so some open pattern rub and stamps, nothing too detailed. So I've got a Tim Holtz flourish here. Um, another example, this is like a mesh rubber stamp. Um, something that it doesn't really matter if you lose a little bit of the detail, because you're not going to get a really um, crisp impression from your stamps. You could also use, this is Magic Mesh to create some texture and I've also got a different mesh this is just from a food packaging okay so to begin with then you need to take your moulding paste and palette knife or you can paint it on but if you use a paintbrush be aware that you're going to get brush marks um, I prefer the randomness of the um, palette knife and the texture it gives um, you could sponge it on as well giving a different effect again and you need enough to coat it with a, a thinnish layer um, it needs to be enough so that you can get a stamped impression but not so much that you're going to lose all the detail of your stamp as I say you won't get a completely clear impression um, but that's okay because we're just trying to add some texture and it's supposed to be an aged look um, so I'm going to take the swirl stamp now and I'm going to make one impression and lift it and then I'm going to clean some of the moulding paste off it because it does get clogged in your stamp and if you don't clean a little bit off um, the next impression is not going to give any detail at all so I'm just going to move that card and put another impression there and again just clean a little bit of the moulding paste from your stamp and I'm going to give one more impression there and the other thing is to make sure that you wash your stamps straight away for this. And I find an old toothbrush um, is really good for getting the moulding paste out of the um, detail parts of your stamp there. Okay, I'm going to also add some texture with this mesh, um, which I'm just going to stretch it across. And I'm not bothered about the fact that my fingers are going onto it because it just all adds to the texture. Um, so just press it down fairly lightly otherwise you'll have massive finger marks obviously and then you end up with something like this so we've got the palette knife marks we've got the stamped swirls and we've got a little bit of the the mesh the next thing to do is to dry this with your heat gun um, and it does take a little while so I'm not going to do it um, and make you listen to the heat gun because it'll probably take us up to the full 10 minutes um, it will bubble as you heat it and that's um, perfectly normal that's what it's supposed to do and it's just going to add some more texture to it so I'm going to put that one to one side and I'm going to show you one that has been heated already so this is one I've just prepared and you can see all the bubbles in the texture there um, and that's uh, obviously making it look more aged so the next thing you need to do is to take your Lumiere paint or whichever brand you're using the white pearlescent paint and you're just going to apply that um, all over if you want to if you want to leave some of the black card showing through um, that's quite a nice effect too and obviously you could play around with this technique and do different colours and things but the the reason I'm doing an aged effect is because I have a, a mini book in mind so I've just been playing with different stamps and colour combinations for this and this is the one that I'm going to use I think. Once you've 
put your uh, Lumia paint on then you need to add some embossing powders and again how much you apply is obviously personal taste personal preference um, the vintage photo sort of adds a almost a rusty look to it and it gives the matte finish some of the others are going to make it a little bit more shiny I'm actually going to add some of the black soot as well which is the distress one so that will stay with the matte uh, finish and it adds to the, the texture as well it's quite tactile when you when you finish with these powders okay then I'm going to come in with some of the um, midnight gold obsidian which is a black one and when it's heated the gold really comes through in this so I'm just going to put just randomly you're going to want some of the um, pearlescent paint to show through so don't cover it all um, but if you do add too much then you can go back with the pearlescent paint afterwards and get it to exactly how you want it so this terracotta rust is uh, quite good for just adding the deeper rust spots onto it and then the last one I'm going to add is the green gold and you will find when this is heated some of these powders will blow a little bit um, and cannot come off so you might need to go back and add some more if that happens okay I'm going to heat this now with the heat gun and again it should start to bubble again and create more texture probably heat it for a little bit longer but we may run out of time if I carry on so heating the embossing powders you can see the gold colour coming through from the obsidian powder there and on the green also um, the next thing you'd need to do is to take the rub and buff and this really brings it alive because you go over the the raised areas you've got a lot of raised areas from the bubbling and you've got obviously your stamped areas as well and where you've added the, the mesh texture so there's a nice mesh texture appearing at the top again there and how much you add or whether you add it at all and what colour it is completely personal preference okay I'm going to leave it there obviously if it wasn't against time I'd give a bit more attention to this and maybe go back with the Lemire or the embossing powders add some more gold leaf to it but that's the effect and it's really really flexible and I'll just show you a couple of other samples that have been done um, this one I did earlier obviously you can see how it can go into a book cover this one here was done on white card so you get a different effect again and the moulding paste was brushed on so you've got some brush marks in that too and you can see the stamped images in that one and the last one very similar um, but without the terracotta embossing powder on this one so I hope um, that's given people some ideas obviously adapt it however you want whichever colours, paints or powders um, colour card stock etc um, but it is good technique and as I say really flexible so good for book covers a couple of projects that I've made with the technique this one is a tag where I've punched out some flowers so you can see the texture on there and they were punched from this sample here okay so that's one thing you can do with them and the second thing that I've done is to make a post-it um, holder so there's little post-it notes inside there just used it to cover added some ideology um, corners some little flowers sprayed with moon shadow mist and some grunge board which has got my initials on and some chain held together with a trinket pin so I hope you like that as an idea and I hope you try the technique bye